show what kind of player that uh, Daniel Dubov is. He's creative, he's dynamic, he's attacking. He's, he's your definition of never go back. Mm. To attack and, OK, Dubov is finally ready for the game to start and he pushes his king's pawn as well. Magnus Carlsen, will we see him go to the opening he used against Anish Giri a couple of rounds ago? No, he goes for the Spanish opening. The white bishop coming out, putting pressure on the black knight, indirectly, therefore, putting pressure on black centre. The Spanish opening, how will Dubov react? The Berlin defence. <laughs> I mean, I thought we'd never see Dubov play the Berlin in his life. Magnus just defending that and Dubov developing his bishop. So Dubov choosing one of the most solid openings uh, out there uh, for black. We did see a trade bishop for knight, and now the game will take a, maybe a slower pace. But definitely has been played throughout the ages. Yep. I mean, it's a very, very popular plan, this exact scenario, but the idea is known. So if white does bring the knight forward, the white knight will be stopped from jumping further. Magnus, we mentioned it, he loves to push pawns on that left side. Which side is the black king going to go? Dubov pushes a pawn. Now he's hinting that he's going to go towards that uh, right side. The Black King no longer will be safe now that Black has started pushing pawns on the other side of the board. But Dubov is forced to trade. So Magnus, he's very much playing the opponent. Mm -hmm. In times like these, you just want to... You know what your opponent wants. You know that their style is very attacking. So you just want to simplify. You want to get rid of their attacking ammunition. And, OK, Black finally does commit the King. He will castle. Yeah, uh, well, he's taking some time out to okay. develop his knight. But moving his knight, is that sort of an indication that maybe he's going to go the other way around? Towards the centre, so this is why Dubov played his bishop to that square. So the knight is not allowed to go to that square. But there's still, you know, the possibility of transferring the knight to the right side of the board. Opponent guessing, but OK, I was going to say it feels like the right moment to castle. But no, he's going after his opponent's bishop. That's going to come back to haunt Dubov later. Yeah. So... OK, the bishop steps away from a potential trade. Full Morphe, or Ooh. rather a game that was not never played. OK. But yeah, all right, what's happening? So the white knight jumped forward, attacking the black queen, the black queen just stepping back. So there's some pressure on black's central pawn right now. Let's go into the board and uh, let's check out. There is actually, as you mentioned, there is a trap. Firstly, black will step forward, This attacking this knight, kicking it back. It's only got one safe square. The knight goes back and now, as you mentioned, Yvanka, yeah. this knight jumps forward and white's queen has no more escape squares. It needs to stay on this diagonal, protecting its own knight, but it cannot do that any longer. And once the queen moves away from the attack of black's knight, then the other white knight will be captured. So an indirect attack there on the white knight, um, this white knight dropping off on this square. That is why Magnus Carlsen, he saw this, he saw that the knight is vulnerable here, so he's retreated it. And I like this a lot. This a lot of pressure now on Black's central pawn. And Black's been forced to attack the White Queen. The White Queen stepped back. And now the Black Knight is kind of superficially defending this pawn because it's about to get kicked back. White will kick back this Black Knight. And uh, what happens if Black goes, if, OK, fine, I'm just going to push my pawn forward. This one? OK, well, I, yeah. OK, well, we actually have a move on the board. Mm -hmm. he's, he's pushed his pawn forward. So the King definitely feels safer over on that right side. But we'll see. OK, he does kick oh, the Black Knight. And now Dubov, he's had time. He doesn't retreat the Knight where he would have lost a pawn. <clears throat> OK, we've seen those Knights disappear from the board. White capturing the Black Knight, Black capturing the other uh, Knight. And now tripled pawns for Black. Oh, if you look at the sea line tripled pawns. That's never ideal. Maybe we'll see a trade at some point. But who will this favour, the Bishop or the Knight? We have an answer, David. He's moved okay. his Rook wow. <laughs> to defend it now. That was not a move I suspected. I, I don't know why I had this idea in my head that he might use the other Rook to defend the Pawn. He wants to use the Rook. Bringing up the Rook. Exactly. And hit that central Pawn like that. And now we're expecting Dubov to play Bishop, Bishop takes, takes pawn, pawn, as he does. And Magnus getting greedy. This is both... <laughs> I'm not so sure about this last move, but this is both players in a nutshell. Is there, like, obvious moves for him now, or...? Well, there we have it. Um, yeah, uh, it's <laughs> obvious for him. <laughs> Maybe not for, not for us, not for some. But he does bring his rook to an open line, attacking a pawn. Again, it feels like that's the kind of move that he could have saved for later, maybe. Instincts are normally materialistic. Um, but Magnus, he does defend it. So, yeah, you're right. It's probably, it makes a lot of sense to defend that pawn. The opponent's king, a bit vulnerable. He doesn't trade. He goes back with the bishop, not to the square you wanted, but attacking the white queen, kicking that white queen back. Continue being greedy. Magnus takes it, Yvanka. No! He, he doesn't no, follow no, your this, advice. This, this one was we, no touch. This one came with a warning because, you know, it wasn't that rook that I was worried about attacking the queen. It mm -hmm. was the other rook. This rook? Yes. But what happens if I get greedy? I'm no, 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 not that rook. And so keep, keep, keep my rook defending the pawn. The other rook. 
That's the rook I was saying. Oh, that's no? what you're rooking. Uh, that's, yep. the one, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, now, okay, Dubov's played it. And now, once the queen moves, as it has done, now Dubov has the option to just take this pawn. And suddenly, black's rook is super active. Um, it doesn't look like a good trade for white. He's just allowed the opponent's rook to get um, to get into his position. And now, sure, okay, this is the position on the board. <laughs> now, surely, Magnus, now is the time. Don't forget, okay, he does castle. He does finally find safety for his king. That, that just means with best play, with perfect play both side, uh, by both sides, it would be a draw. But win the game. Magnus winning a pawn now. Um, okay, now Magnus two pawns up. For black, if you take that knight, then suddenly your bishop would be under attack. But the black re retreating, white can just move mm -hmm. the queen back. Um, because only one move saves your knight right now. He does find he the does best move. find the best move. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, Magnus, he does make his move. Magnus makes his move for a sensible one. He just brings his rook across, defending a weak pawn. So Black's bishop trying to attack some pawns. At the moment, everything's protected by white. Winning against uh, Hu Yifan. Wesley saw when Ding played the draw, Svidler was able to win his game against Adeban. You, you, you were quite critical about it. We were like, no, you can't play like that. It's too straightforward. <laughs> and, uh, well, it's on the board now. So. <laughs> it's on the board. I mean, it's say? the most direct line, but it just makes white's task easier. As nice. we mentioned, Black's queen has to move. The bishop or the rook will drop off. Most likely, you should, well, you should keep your rook rather than the bishop. Right, so maybe he's thinking, OK, I, I drop my queen back. And then after queen takes bishop, then I can play queen. No, you can't. I have to go. Queen takes pawn. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yep. And it's on the board. And now when Magnus plays... Queen takes pawn as well. Queen takes pawn, you go... Ah, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that's, that's how we create chaos. <laughs> <laughs> sounded very cockney when you said, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apples yeah. and pears. <laughs> um, OK, Magnus now trying to kick away that black queen yeah. from the centre. Makes a lot of sense. There was a small trick in the position um, if Black had taken a pawn with his queen, but he didn't fall for that. Sudden blitz attack against the White King, but Magnus trying to trade the rooks now. So rooks on the board, I might have to lose time. OK, well... He does it. Dubov does it. He lines up both his rooks against White's weak. If Magnus can just swap off queens, it's going to be an impossible task for Dubov to save the game. So Magnus using his rook to kick away the Black Queen, also potentially eyeing up the pawn behind it. Uh, so Black's queen has to go back to a square that defends that black pawn uh, out there on the right. So nice move by Magnus. Black's queen is going to have to go to a passive... OK, I was going to say back to a passive square. Instead, she steps forward. Uh, we, we, we want to bank it. <laughs> Put it in the bag and, and just get... OK, Magnus go. finds it. And, um, yeah, the most human move, I think, just getting rid of any potential risk. If the queen's come on, at least you know you won't get checkmated. Uh, he's been checkmated too many times by Dubov, and although the evaluation bar doesn't fully approve, it just keeps a winning advantage and it removes all risk, so mm -hmm. very, very sensible. The black queen, if it moves, the pawn behind it will be captured. OK, Dubov has allowed the exchange of queens, and we mm -hmm. now have a double rook ending. I mean... Yeah, uh, it's very little hope now. And Magnus, that, that move, I think, is the killer. That move is so accurate because the whole point, the only chance that Black had in this position is if, they, if, if Dubov manages to line up the two rooks along the second row, then there's some trouble. And it doesn't even matter if you actually lose a pawn mm -hmm. on the right side and, and, you, and you trade. As long as you trade a set of rooks, that's what counts. All right, well, uh, another game has actually finished. Artemiev on the board, just hope that Magnus kind of pushes his pawns too quickly or that he kind of forgets to trade a set of rooks and, and then there might be a chance. And that's the key. Whichever pawn advances, you attack the pawn that protects it, the furthermost back pawn. That's going to be Dubov's strategy right now, but Magnus keeping everything together. Now I'm wondering if it's going to be a big issue for Magnus Carlsen. 18 seconds. Yes. It is, it is a, okay, he, he plays the move that I was thinking mm -hmm. about and uh, now I'm expecting to see the black rook attack one of the pawns. Mating deaths. So, yeah, yeah, okay, so, so actually, yeah, okay, Mag Magnus is killing, killing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so the mating net that I saw was basically involving, uh, it was very ambitious, but it was all to do with the fact that the White King is stuck in the back rank and maybe there's a possibility of advancing your pawns and keeping the king caged in. I, and uh, now the bar is getting now excited. Now finally the bar is getting excited. <laughs> maybe Black just had to grit his teeth and take White's pawn, White's corner pawn there, and just hope for the best and pray that he was able to save that game and stop White's remaining pawn. It was but the only chance. It was the only chance. But this way, 
it feels like he's just... OK, but this is a little bit sneaky, right? Mm -hmm. Is there more than one winning move? I'm not so sure anymore. Hey, he, he does take that pawn off. Maybe it was better to actually ignore that pawn. OK, oh, Ooh, he, he made that with one second to spare. Wow. wow, gosh, keeping us on the edge of our seats. So, uh, OK, now if I were Magnus, I would just simply hold on to that pawn. Mm -hmm. S. He goes he doesn't. active instead. He goes active instead, OK. Still a nice idea. Yep, a nice idea there by okay. Magnus. <laughs> Two one second. Seconds. Did he make a move? Yes, he did. Okay. Two seconds to spare. But now Magnus is about to gobble up a second pawn and two pawn advantage. Yes, he's lost what his far advanced pass pawn, but uh, he's going to get an extra pawn on both sides of the board. This should be winning for Magnus. Okay, now he swaps off a set of rooks and that is game over. We mentioned as soon as one set of rooks come off the board, black has no more counterplay, no more attack against the white king. And all Magnus needs to do, trade that set of rooks, Protect your pawn in the corner there, and slowly but surely, you'll create two pass pawns, mm. and those will overwhelm Black's army. Right, exactly. And the pawn that's there on the left is kind of more or less the decoy that's going to mm. hold, just tie the Black Rook down, and uh, yeah, there's just really nothing to be done here. And uh, Magnus pushing his pawn forward. Mm -hmm. yep. There's nothing, you know, what to do. Rook takes Rook, King takes... And now Black, oh, the only thing Black can do is just wait. Yeah, and the, there is a saying that all Rook end games are drawn. It's kind of tongue in cheek, uh, but not all Rook end games are a draw. Not when you're two pawns up, uh, when they're two healthy pawns as they are here. And there we go, Magnus just taking kind of baby steps, just stepping one square forward with his pawn. Next, he'll centralize the White King. And yeah, that shows, uh, shows optimism. But yeah, Magnus, he's again the end game king. He's not going to let mm. this one slip. And Okay. Yeah, White it looks like Dubo is about to give up. Yeah, he knows that it's inevitable. He can slow things down, but the result is not going to change. White's slowly going to step forward with his pawn. There we go. A Black's Rook will be tied down, stopping that pawn, and then White will make a pass pawn on the other side. Dubo thinking, is there anything he can do to trick Magnus? I guess that's not it. Nope, unfortunately not. He's trying to trade a set of pawns. He's yeah. hoping for some stalemates. He's going to try and trap his own black king and hope that uh, hope that Magnus walks into some uh, tricky stalemate there. That was that was very uh, very cunning. But Magnus, he actually brought his rook up, yeah. releasing squares for the black king. Right, exactly. And uh, it's like that whole hall and oats song. Like I can't go for that. <laughs> no can do. So uh, yeah, very nice. And uh, we have a result. Magnus Carlsen wins against Daniel Dubov. Yep.